The tropical rainforests of the world are hot, wet and lush forests found between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, hence they're called tropical. If we have a look at this map to show their location, here is the mighty Amazon rainforest in South America and here is the Congo rainforest in Central Africa. Both of them are found along the equator, so another word for them is equatorial, and generally speaking the rainforests are sandwiched between the Tropic of Cancer, which is this dotted line, and the Tropic of Capricorn here, um, so we call them tropical. We're going to look at characteristics of the rainforest, and we're going to have a look at quite a few sections, the first being climate and water cycle. In terms of climate, um, the general temperature is about 27 degrees centigrade um, for the rainforests of the world, and that's throughout the year. Here with Manaus in Brazil, you can see it's a bit hotter. Also, rainforests are wet pretty much all year round. Um, they have a drier season in the UK summertime and a wetter season. However, um, they're very wet all year round. If we have a look and see the rainforest water cycle, late afternoon, early evening each day, it rains. Um, this rain is intercepted by trees, branches and leaves. Some of the uh, rain will fall off the leaves and land on the ground. The trees are sucking in, absorbing the water through their roots. And as the sun rises during the day, more and more water will evaporate from the trees. This water rises up into the atmosphere, cools and condenses, and then you're back to the start of the cycle where you get heavy rain late afternoon, early evening. Because this occurs every day, we call it a diurnal water cycle. And this type of rainfall is called convectional rain. Next, we're going to look at animals and plants um, within the rainforest. Flora, if you just think of flora margarine, um, that comes from plant oils. So you can remember that flora is plants and fauna, they are our animals. In the rainforest, you have four different layers to the trees. The first one is really, really high up. The very tallest trees we get are called emergence. They're up to 50 meters high. To be this tall, the trees have massive roots stretching out from the base of them, which are called buttress roots. The next layer within the rainforest is the canopy, and this is the main layer of branches and leaves within the forest. Um, because it is so dense, 70% um, of the sunlight um, is, hits this layer and 80% of the rainfall hits this layer within the forest, which means the layers underneath it are quite dark, such as the under canopy, which is the younger trees growing up to the height of the canopy, and also the shrub layer. Within the shrub layer, it is so dark because of the shade provided by branches above it, only 5% of sunlight reaches this layer. The hot and wet conditions help these trees and plants to thrive and 15 million species of plants and animals have been identified within our rainforests. Most of the birds and animals and insects live in the canopy layer, that, that dense layer of branches and um, leaves, and most of the creatures have been perfectly adapted for life in the rainforest, such as stick insects, um, which are mimicking sticks and spider monkeys that have their gripping tails to help them um, go from tree to tree, swing from branch to branch. Next characteristics we're going to look at are the nutrient cycle and the soil profile. Now, trees are shedding their leaves all year round. They land on the forest floor and they decay really, really rapidly. A, it's really hot, B, it's really wet, and C, there's a huge amount of insects within the soil that help to break down the leaves. Now, the goodness from the leaves is um, washed into the soil. Um, when I say goodness, I mean chemicals such as nitrates and phosphates and calcium and potassium. And these chemicals that go into the soil um, are sucked up, they're absorbed 
by the tree's roots that help the tree to grow really, really well. And the tree grows really rapidly. It'll absorb these chemicals into it. And then when it sheds its leaves, the chemicals are dropped back down to the ground. So we call it a nutrient cycle because the, this goodness, the chemicals, are being moved around from trees to the leaves to the forest floor and the soil and then back up into the tree again. In terms of soil, soils in rainforests are generally very bad. They're very, very infertile. They lack the minerals and nutrients um, because they're quickly taken up by the trees through their roots. The layer of soil is very, very thin because the fallen leaves decay so rapidly. In England, you'd have a huge pile of leaves forming before any rot away. In rainforest, they rot really, really, really quickly. Next section we're going to look at is the value of the rainforest. Why should we protect the rainforests? Well, we can look at two categories. The goods are the physical products that people can use from the forest and services are the jobs that rainforests are doing for us. So let's have a look at them. What can we get from the rainforest? We can get fruit and vegetables. We can get a huge amount of different kinds of wood and 25% of modern med medicines are coming from the rainforests. One of which to point out is the drug vincristine and it's helped increase survival rate from, for children who are suffering from cancer. So very essential forest goods. If we look at the services, well, the rainforests are the lungs of the world. They're taking in carbon dioxide continually, which is great because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. And they're continually giving out oxygen, which is essential for our survival. Meanwhile, the forest is providing a habitat for all of the plants and animals um, that we've already mentioned, um, stick insects, but also creatures like the orangutan. And finally, the rainforests maintain the water cycle. They're continually evaporating water into the atmosphere and providing most of the world's rainfall. Next section is human impacts. What are we doing to endanger the rainforest? 31 million acres of rainforest are cut down each year, um, equivalent to one acre per second. Now, an acre of land is about the size of a football pitch. Well, a football pitch is actually 1.3 acres in size. So we can see a massive amount of forest is being cut down each year. Now, here are some of the reasons why. Um, firstly, logging. We're going to use those trees um, to build um, bridges, build houses, um, use as fuel to burn. Next, um, you can get hydroelectric power. So many rivers and streams run through forests like the Amazon. All you need to do is dam one, a huge reservoir will build up behind it, which floods the land. And then you've got a source of power as well as a store of water uh, for when it's needed. But it destroys habitat and also local people um, lose their homes. Thirdly, cattle ranching. About 80% of Brazil's um, areas that are deforested are used for cattle ranching. And farmers are making good money because of the large American demand for beef within the Amazon rainforest. And finally, mineral extraction. If you find gold, copper, diamonds, etc. underneath the rainforest, you have to cut down the trees to get to it. But also um, roads will be built crisscrossing the rainforest in order to get to those minerals. Next section is interdependence. Now, interdependence means that every part of the rainforest depends on every other part um, for its survival. And in this diagram, I want to show you some examples of how different parts of the rainforest rely on each other. So here is our first one. Trees rely on the soil to give them water and also give them nutrients from that, that rotting leaves and vegetation. Next one. And the forest floor relies on trees shedding their leaves to have the thin amount of soil that they do have. People rely on the trees because they will harvest fruits from the trees and use the woods uh, for, need, for things that they need. Next one, and the trees rely on the forest floor also as well as water 
um, they will take up nutrients from the leaves. And animals need trees because they will eat the plants and seeds and nuts and fruits. Animals, what do they provide the forest floor? Well, they will excrete, they will die, and then they will add their nutrients to the forest floor. And similarly, leaves falling and plants dying will add more nutrients to the forest floor. And finally, soil will provide the plants um, with a source of water. So without any parts of this system, um, this whole system wouldn't be able to exist. Finally, we're going to have a look at a case study of how the rainforest can be managed sustainably. We're going over to Costa Rica and in Costa Rica there is the Samasati Nature Retreat. What is it? It's a nature resort. Um, it's got hotels, it's got accommodation and it offers relaxation in a rainforest setting. You can do activities like yoga, bird watching, kayaking and horseback riding but their activities are designed so that they do not damage the environment. Now, how is it sustainable? Um, it's socially sustainable, so it's good for local people. Um, local people are employed and a good source of income is provided for them. Also, local people can use the tourist facilities as well, such as the football field and the gravel roads the locals can use as well as the tourists. In terms of environmental sustainability, um, these buildings that have been built have been designed to fit in within the rainforest without damaging it. Rather than having pipes coming from miles away supplying rainwater, the rainwater is collected on their roofs to be used for showers and toilets. Drinking water comes from local natural springs. The buildings fit between the trees. No trees were destroyed when the hotel was built. And also the wood used for the buildings was from trees that had already fallen down naturally over the years, rather than cutting any new ones down. The buildings are built on stilts to allow natural drainage. Only biodegradable soap and shampoo are allowed. And finally, all of the activities the tourists do, such as bird watching, are not harmful to the environment. Here are two images showing the Samasati nature retreat. Buildings built on stilts. The wood is from local trees that fell down anyway. Um, here's the sort of views that you would get. Looks blissful.